an old friend, really. Podcasting's Rich Sigfrit. That's how, that's what he goes by. Rich Sigfrit reached out to me uh, during during a, a paranormal stream, actually, and he said, "Wouldn't it be great if we had a five minute paranormal of basic terms? Basic terms. Basic terms. The of the the things that that we should know." Uh, when we're when we're doing the talks and we're and we're doing um, live uh, footage review and things like that, and I thought that's a great idea. Yeah, so yeah, absolutely. So that's how we're absolutely. kicking it off. And I think this this is likely to be a series because while they're basic terms, there's a lot of basic terms out yeah. there. Yeah. So this is paranormal terms 101. There'll probably be a 102 and a 103. Mm -hmm. So notebooks out, pens up. Let's do it. Let's do it. And what are we starting with? Our first term is EMF, an acronym that stands for electromagnetic field. So essentially, this is an energy field that is generated by the movement of electrons. And it is thought, it is believed that manifestations of spiritual energy actually cause fluctuations in the magnetic field, i.e. increasing that charge of that field and then we measure that with certain devices that can read these changes in the electromagnetic field. Now, the thing about EMFs, uh, we learned a lot about how they work from uh, Nick McGear over at Stories in the Cemetery. And what, what I mean by that is Nick was not necessarily interested in an EMF hit of 1.0 no. no. or lower right. because the Earth has yeah. an electromagnetic field. And also, <laughs> locations themselves right. have variation in that field, which mm -hmm. is why you should always go through and do a baseline right. reading to understand what is, what's, what's the natural EMF of this location of this room. And we've done that before where, you know, you, you'll go around and you'll, you'll, you'll hold your EMF reader up towards lights, up towards light fixtures, uh, different mechanical devices. And we've even seen like at the candy factory, you know, we'll go into a popular hangout, the ladies' bathroom, but we'll get to this one point in the ladies' bathroom where it spikes at like 26. Right. And it's because that's where they're running all the computer wire. Yeah. And, yeah. Mm -hmm. and so you uh, do a baseline to get an idea of where there may be artificially created spikes, and then you go, all right, need to make sure that we keep all the instruments over here. You can also disrupt EMF with a walkie talkie, something so, you gotta so be careful So this is about. a little bit different because okay. with the REM pod, the REM pod's generating its own electromagnetic field, but the REM pod will go off is because that antenna is picking up the burst, the frequency burst of that transmission. Right, and that's yeah. and that that's something you have to be aware of yeah. when you're, as, yeah. as we discovered. But I would save that for the REM pod term. Our second term is EVP, not to be confused with EMF. Right. EVP is electronic voice phenomena. And what this is, is a voice captured on recording medium, be it digital, uh, be it analog, that you did not hear in the moment, uh, but that you hear upon reviewing uh, the recording. Perfect example is this right here. Speak with us, please. Anyone from the Army of the Potomac? Here. What makes EVPs really uh, memorable is when you capture them not just on one device, but on multiple devices. Right, and then explain that no one heard that, yet three right. recorders picked it up. Exactly. Now there's a new term, but I'm putting it in 101 because it's related to EVPs. It is. And it's called DVPs, which is also known as direct voice phenomenon. But I already know about DVPs, but I knew them under a different name disembodied voices. I don't quite get why they want to make DVP a thing because I, I'm like, well, we, we called it, we've already got it. Well, something. if you it's think a disembodied about it, voice. You yeah, know? I think DVP sounds a bit more technical. A it, bit more yeah. like, well, this the DVP. Uh, as opposed to the DVP, the DVP. So, yeah. but, you know, p potato, potato, tomato, yeah. tomato. It's, it's, if you pick up a DVP, it's the same thing as a disembodied voice similar to what we picked up here. A toast to those of Linville, past, present, and future. May we all reside here with community, love, and good spirit. Cheers. Cheers. Chin chin. Chin chin. Pip, did you just say something over there? What? You didn't say cheers? Brent, did you say cheers? I heard a voice. 
I sounded like that a too. voice that sounded like an old lady going, cheers. A toast to those of Linville, past, present, and future. May we all reside here with community, love, and good spirit. Cheers. cheers. Chin, 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 chin. chin. I'm just going to call it a disembodied voice. Well, yeah, I you know? will not be calling it DVP. <laughs> I, it, it did, I'm sorry no. for for the fans of, of that term. I'm not I'm not knocking on it, but uh, I feel like disembodied voice encompasses a certain mystique that I like. Yeah, a certain romance yeah. to the term. So now we get to what may be an uh, an advanced term, but I'm going to go on ahead and throw it in with paranormal 101 because I know I drop this term a lot. ITC or instrumental transcommunication. What is that, T? <laughs> <laughs> it has been highly debated. That's what I'm finding out. It is highly debated as to whether or not it is scientifically viable or not in paranormal communication. Right. And what ITC is, is the technology that is involved in the Paratech and also on Ghost Tube and in the Ovulus. ITC also yeah spirit boxes are oh, classified as, as ITC, ITC yeah as well. I didn't even think about that you're yeah. right spirit boxes geoport right the geoport portals it's the theory that they get inside these devices find something in a word bank or find a snippet of communication mm -hmm. and then it comes out as a thought or a word or yeah. something yeah. relevant to mm -hmm. the situation yeah. and then there's some advices that uh, that detect Slight variations in environmental variables, yeah. EMF, uh, humidity, uh, right. temperature, things like that. Like, the, uh, like, like fast editing. Yes, like and, then, fast and then they take that uh, numerical information and it passes through an algorithm that then... There's a lot of things it's, happening in ITC. Yes. In, in, in ITC. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of things that are happening in these devices, and some people give them credence some of them thinks it's absolute hogwash mm -hmm. from our own personal experience so what phil's doing is phil is uh starting up a spirit box special session you're nervous oh just wait just wait and as he's starting up a spirit box phil 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 what <laughs> what It's really hard for us to ignore ITC technology. Yeah, yeah. I think it's a, an essential part of the paranormal jargon and something that you should know. Yeah, agreed. Agreed. Okay. Yeah. All right, gang. Uh, I hope you learned something today. Pencils down. Pencils and down. <laughs> You'll be quizzed at the end of the week. But uh, while you're preparing for that quiz, do us a favor. Go ahead and like and subscribe to the channel and enable notifications for whenever we put up new content because all these interactions, the likes, the subs, uh, becoming a member, and also the, um, the, 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 uh, the, the little things like sharing an episode or sharing a five-minute paranormal, all those things really help us out here at Old Spirits. And thank you so much for watching. On behalf of everyone here, take care. Stay safe, and we'll see you in the field.